Hello, welcome back. Today I'm going to be reacting to watching uh, the things Queen Elizabeth has never been allowed to do. This is by the list. So I know they're very, I don't know if strict's the right word, pretty, pretty strict, I guess, with what the royals can do, keeping, you know, the certain image that they are wanting to project and be for the people. And I'm just curious to see what she's never been allowed to do and if this exaggerates anything, and if there's any additional things that you could add to what they say or that they did not add in the video. Um, let's just jump in. Let's see what she was not, never allowed to do apparently. And um, yeah, let's let's get in a discussion. Let's go. Let's do Queen this. Queen Elizabeth may be one of the most famous people on the planet, but that doesn't mean she can do anything she likes. In fact, her lofty position means there's a lot she can't get away with. Here are the things Queen Elizabeth has never been allowed to do. All right, all right. In the UK, all citizens have the right to express their political opinions, or almost all of them at least. As it turns out, Queen Elizabeth is expected to remain strictly neutral with respect to political matters. This also means that she can't vote or stand for election. Usually the Queen does a pretty good job of keeping her political views private, but just because she's not allowed to voice them publicly doesn't mean she doesn't have them, and she has actually broken this rule on a few rare occasions. For instance, back in 1976, she let slip her opinions on American independence, allegedly saying, We oh. lost the American colonies because we lacked the statesmanship to know the right time and the manner of yielding what is impossible to keep. In another instance, the Queen made right. a thinly veiled political comment about an impending referendum on Scottish independence, saying, Well, I hope people will think very carefully about the future. Most recently, however, she attempted to encourage potential doubters into taking a vaccination for COVID-19. Having recently taken the vaccine herself, the Queen said, It is obviously difficult for people to, if they've never had it, vaccine because they ought to think about other people rather than themselves. It may seem strange, but members of the royal family, including Queen Elizabeth, aren't allowed to be touched by the so-called common folk. Indeed, physical contact is one of the great taboos surrounding the British monarch, and initiating it with one of them is generally seen as a huge faux pas. Still, this rule doesn't mean that Queen Elizabeth has literally never touched anyone from outside of her family. Sometimes she has even welcomed contact with other people in public. For instance, she was once caught on camera with her arm around Michelle Obama. Obama later recalled the moment in her memoir, Becoming, writing that she never Never realized the touch would be such a big deal. She said, What is true among world leaders is that there are people who handle protocol, and usually the people they're representing don't want all that protocol. So you wonder, well, who are you doing this for? Because they don't want it, we don't want it, but it's just the way things are. For people, dinner parties are a chance to sit back, catch up with friends, and enjoy a little good food. For Queen Elizabeth, however, dinner parties have never been that relaxed. She's certainly never had the freedom to choose her conversation partner at formal dinners. The rule is that Queen Elizabeth begins dinner speaking to the person on her right and then switches to the person on her left. This is a pretty strict rule, too, as Formula One star Lewis Hamilton once discovered the hard way during a dinner at the palace. So I sat down and she was oh, no. to my right and I started to talk to her and she was like, um, <laughs> she was like, no, you, you, you speak that way first and I'll speak this way and I'll come back to you. <laughs> That's a funny clip. clip. I'm glad they added that in. Just these uh, old school rules that are, um, that they just keep in place. I would like to go back and know why this is, if there's an explanation for a lot of these rules. Some of them, you know, you could go back and kind of use common sense and think of why they have this, but. Some of them are interesting and uh, there's no to, doubt to about, about it. Queen Elizabeth is about as much a celebrity as you can possibly get. Unlike other celebrities, however, the Queen has never been allowed to sign her autograph. In fact, the entire royal family oh. is banned from signing their names for fans in case their signature is forged later on. Now, there have been oh. a few rare instances in which other royals have broken this rule, but don't expect to see that kind of rebellion from the Queen anytime soon. By the sound of things, Queen Elizabeth rarely signs her own name, period. In 2020, an old 1954 Christmas card from the Queen and her husband, Prince Philip, was sold at a staggering 4,500 pounds, wow. simply because Queen Elizabeth's signature is so rarely seen. The joy of choosing That's a baby cool. name is one of the most fun parts about bringing a child into the world. Sadly, Queen Elizabeth has never had the freedom to name her children like most people have. The Queen is mother to four children, Charles, Anne, really? Andrew, and Edward. And while she probably had some say in her children's names, there are a number of traditions and restrictions that likely guided her decisions. Indeed, royal baby names are a pretty serious business. They have to both acknowledge history by paying respects to relatives, while also being fashionable. The complexities of naming a royal baby don't 
stop with the first name either, as most royal tots end up with a number of middle names, each paying homage to various relatives. For instance, Prince Charles's full name is Charles Philip Arthur George, Prince Edward's full name is Edward Anthony Richard Louis, and Princess Anne's full name is Anne Elizabeth Alice Louise. Talk about a mouthful. That Unfortunately for Queen Elizabeth, public displays of affection are strictly off-limits for royals, largely as a matter of custom. It is, however, a largely unspoken rule. As royal etiquette expert Micah Meyer told People magazine, senior members of the royal family would likely not be told how to interact or when they can or cannot show PDA, and would be trusted to use their better judgment as to when it's appropriate. This unspoken no PDA rule is generally thought to be linked to the fact that the royals are often out in public in an official capacity. And and hugs and kisses would simply be inappropriate. That's true. It's kind of like, I mean, their whole life, it seems like it's their kind of job when they're out in public or to see how, you know, people perceive them. So it's kind of like, you know, you're, you're, you're uh, working, you're not going to go out to lunch with your, your work and then grab a drink, you know, grab an alcoholic drink or something. It's just something that you don't do, at least here in the States. That's probably different, maybe in uh, other countries, but that's what we do here. Just like, you just don't do that while working. So it's kind of like the same same type of thing. You, you're you kind of on the job, be professional. Naturally, couples like Meghan Markle and Prince Harry or Kate Middleton and Prince William have broken the rules a few times, but what about Queen Elizabeth? Would she ever be caught sharing a moment of affection with her husband, Prince Philip? Well, way back in 1953, Philip kissed the Queen during her coronation, and in 1991, he kissed her on the cheek during the New Year celebrations. But aside from those few instances, the Queen has tended to keep her romantic life decidedly private. One of the strictest royal rules the family has to follow has to do with how women are allowed to sit, specifically that they're not allowed to cross their legs. Royal etiquette expert Micah Meyer, who covered classic royal positions in her book, Modern Etiquette Made Easy, explains that she calls the common female sitting position in the royal family the Duchess Slant. The sitting position involves keeping the knees firmly together while tilting the legs to the side. Indeed, it's hard to imagine seeing Queen Elizabeth with her legs crossed these days. As she said on the ITV documentary Queen of the world, sitting cross-legged is actually quite painful. I mean, the only thing I found difficult was sitting cross-legged. For a long period of time, it can be difficult. <laughs> it's quite painful. Really? Still, from the looks of it, she broke the unspoken rule about leg crossing quite a few times in her youth, when she was a little more sprightly. Many people's given names are seldom used in their daily lives, and both nicknames and short-form names have become a staple of modern life, with almost everyone going by a shorter version of their full name. But for members of the royal family, using a nickname isn't really allowed. All royal family members are expected to go by their full names in public, as anything less would be deemed inappropriate. Still, this doesn't mean that Queen Elizabeth and her family don't have private nicknames for- Yeah, privately I'm sure they do, but once again in public, it's their their job their their job capacity to be professional and you can't just go up to someone and say Liz or or some other royal family nickname or or shortened name that would definitely be inappropriate kind of like here you, you say you know if you're a kid you say Mrs whatever Mr whatever it's just how you do it etiquette politeness for each other. For example, Queen Elizabeth was called Lilibet while she was growing up. Additionally, her husband, Prince Philip, often calls her Cabbage. And when Prince William was a child, he cabbage. reportedly called her Gary as he couldn't say Granny. That's quite a nickname for a queen. One of the rules Queen Elizabeth must always follow is to never sit on another monarch's throne. While the opportunity probably doesn't arrive very often, Queen Elizabeth did have to follow the rule on one particular and rather strange occasion. When she visited the set of the <laughs> HBO series Game of Thrones really? in 2014, Queen that Elizabeth clearly thought better than to sit on the show's Iron Throne. Actress Maisie Williams, who portrayed Arya Stark on the show, spoke about the incident on the YouTube series First We Feast. She said, She didn't necessarily refuse, no one said, sit on on that chair because it is going to be funny. We all just sort of smiled and were like, is she going to do it? She sort of looked and said, that doesn't look very comfy. <laughs> yeah, that, that's probably not a good look if you go in sitting on different thrones, wherever you're at, different countries, a movie set. 
especially, you know, royal. When it comes to food, the royals have to follow a surprising number of rules and regulations. So while you may be tempted to think that eating like a king or queen means eating everything your heart desires, this is far from true. Apparently, Queen Elizabeth and her family are never allowed to eat or drink a wide variety of items, including shellfish, garlic, and even tap water. The ban on shellfish is in place in case of digestive issues that can interfere with public engagements. Foreign tap water is also off the menu for the same reason. Garlic is reportedly yeah. off limits too, according to a former palace chef, and you can probably guess why. There are a number of beauty rules the royals are forced to follow too. After all, there's a reason you never see paparazzi shots of Queen Elizabeth and her family in their sweats and sneakers. First of all, Queen Elizabeth has never been allowed to grow long nails, so long, colorful nails are an absolute no-no in the palace. Additionally, Queen Elizabeth has to be mindful of her hair and makeup, as the royals must always have neat, healthy-looking hair, while makeup should be modest and natural. There is a little wiggle room with these rules, though, and the queen in particular is a big fan of wearing lipstick. She even has her own signature pink color, while all of the other ladies in the court select more muted tones. In fact, her passion for lipstick is such that she even had her own shade commissioned for her coronation. Wow. Some of the greatest photographs in royal history have come courtesy of the queen's occasional sojourns to church or to the races, with her behind the wheel. And while it's certainly not common to see the queen behind the wheel, she really does love to drive, having learned while serving in the Women's Auxiliary Territorial Service during World War II. Nevertheless, it turns out that the queen probably doesn't get to drive nearly as often as she'd like to. As Duncan Larcom, an ex-royal correspondent, told Town & Country, when they're on official royal business, as far as I can remember, they are always driven to and from their appointments. Even when the royals do get to drive by themselves, they're never really alone, Larcom explained. They'll still have their protection officers in tow. They would have had at least two vehicles driving with them and a protection officer in the vehicle with them, all armed. Yeah. Yeah, I could never imagine them just going off and driving by themselves wherever they want. Of course, it's gonna be like, you know, any country leader, they're going to have protection. That'd be pretty wild if you did see that, though. As much as she'd probably like to, it doesn't seem like the queen gets to enjoy the open road like the rest of us do. It's not just in the car that Queen Elizabeth is surrounded by security guards, though. In fact, the queen has probably never been out in public without security guards at her side. According to some reports, each member of the royal family has up to five highly trained armed officers to look after them while they're out and about. And when Queen Elizabeth Yo, visits her that. Scottish palace, Balmoral, she's apparently joined by a security team made up of dozens of officers, who reportedly refer to the queen as S. And all this security isn't for nothing. In 1974, Princess Anne, Queen Elizabeth's daughter, was almost kidnapped, but was saved by her security guard. And when the queen was visiting okay. Jamaica years later, her guards had to rescue her from an overly adoring crowd. So while this level of constant security may sound a little over the top, based on these incidents in the past, it's probably necessary for the safety of the queen. Check out like one of our newest- Kidnap? That's crazy. How did that go down and where at who? That's, that's wild to even think about. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. If you if you're royalty, if you're you know super famous, whatever it is, you'll need protection for them. Unfortunately, crazy people out there. Interesting. I guess a lot of these make sense, and they do explain them. Some of them just seem like old school and kind of tradition. That's what you just go with. Like the crossing of the lakes. It seems like she just doesn't. It's it's uncomfortable for her, and she just never does it. Touching people, yeah, I, I guess. My question is, would you would you like to be like royal like this? Would you be down for all these, I guess, kind of like restrictions, or like what you can never do? Yeah, pretty much all these restrictions on your life, but you get to live, you know, like a queen. You get to live in the, the highest of luxury, the most beautiful places. Everything's kind of, you know, paid for and taken care of. You're protected. Kind of take away, I guess, some of your freedoms to do this would you would you take you know the queen's spot if you could and live like a royal like that or would you not be down for that so that that's one of my uh, my questions for you i don't think i would like it honestly of course you know the the uh majesty of the whole thing the the beauty of the the places you get to live in living like luxury would be amazing but just kind of I think just going out to being a normal person would kind of uh, wear down on me. But she grew up with it, so it's probably a lot easier. Plus, I'm American, so uh, it's harder to kind of grasp my, he my head around it. Like this right here. It's crazy how kings and queens just want to be regular people, and regular people want to be kings and queens. I feel like that's kind of true. 
Additionally, her husband, Prince Philip, often calls her cabbage. I spit out my drink at that one. Yeah, that's that's something that you... That one and what was it, Gary? Was was pretty funny. Those, those two kind of nicknames, mainly because I couldn't say Granny or Grandma. Gary. That's cool that she has, like, her own shade of lipstick. Her outfits are really on point. They're very, very good. This was a good video. I liked it. It was it was to the point. It was They didn't spend too much time just, you know, on one offshoot of, uh, of what she couldn't do. And most of these made sense. Let me know once again, would you swap places? Like, would you, would you be royal to, I guess, leave some freedoms behind but get to live like her? Uh, w would you be willing to do that? Become like, you know, just boom, royal, but these restrictions are on you, plus all the other ones that you probably know more about. And yeah, we'll get into discussion. So until next time, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me. And uh, the royal family is very interesting. So more to come. Have a good rest of your day.